Here we go. So we are continuing our discussions with Dr. Tart on BlackAmericaWeb.com and the Time Joiner Morning Show. And we're talking relationships. Dr. Aldewan Tart is a clinical psychologist. He's an author. He's a motivational speaker. He's a father. And he's also featured on TV's one, TV One's new series, Love Addiction, uh, as one of the featured therapists. Um, and he has a book called The Ring Formula. Flash the book. <laughs> I love I love the cover, the ring formula, how to be the only one he ever needs. So, uh, welcome back. Thank you very much, Nikki. Glad to, glad to be here. So we've talked about love addictions, and now I want to talk more about um, the book, the ring formula, because that's I, I think truly women. Some women say that they're not looking to be married, but I think that every woman has that you know knight in uh, armor. I won't say the white knight, but the knight in armor coming to, to, to rescue them and putting the ring on the finger. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about the book and what motivated you to write it. I mean, one, you know, I have a daughter, so I said, you know, what advice does she need to have to be able to successfully date? And then, uh, so when she gets older, and then two. You know, I was looking for myself, and I found that where women had degrees in law and business, journalism, many of them didn't know the first thing about dating. They didn't even have a GED. So mm -hmm. I said, why don't I write a book that's going to empower women to get men to chase them? I wanted to put out something positive, especially in the African-American community, that was empowering towards the woman that actually did, you know, the brothers a favor. Hey, if you know how to date better, then we're going to marry you, and then we can improve our community. Now, I, I, I think that the book, and I know that you, you're going to say that you're not preaching in the book, and you're not, but you, you really are um, giving advice that, that's rooted in, in spiritual um, values or Christian, Christian values. True? Oh, absolutely. Okay. If we're talking about the origin of love, how do you talk about it without a biblical perspective? However, this is not the Bible. I, this book is for everyone. It mm -hmm. meets them where they are, but it also talks about real love, not sex love, not infatuation. But this is how you move towards the, the love that you need for a man to have for you and for you to have to him to move towards marriage. This is not about a fling, a one-night stand. This is about the real deal. Read this book if you want to get married. Well, in the first chapter, and I, I admit I pushed past it, but I was a little like, ah! <laughs> the first chapter is understanding the importance of cooking. Now, for a lot of women I know who have very, very busy schedules, and I love to cook, so I, I you know, and even I was just kind of like, I got to cook for them? Um, why do you say that it, cooking is so important uh, for a relationship and for a man? I mean, a lot of times, especially men from the South that have Southern roots, when they think about a wife, they think about being able to nurture and take care of a family. So if you can't, if you don't cook for your man or you're not willing to start trying to cook for your man, it's difficult for a man to see you as a wife and as a mother. And then, two, uh, men, uh, men get tired of eating out. <laughs> and if I can eat at your house and you can take care of me, then why would I need to eat out anywhere else? I'll let you go where you want to go with that statement, Nikki. And then, uh, three, three. Why would I go anywhere with that? <laughs> I, I was just simply saying, if I eat at home, it's no need to dine yes. out anywhere else. Okay. And then, number three, on a deeper and more spiritual level, this is really about affirming yourself as his wife. And most wives want to have the dominant or sole position of being able to nourish your man. You want to be in control of not only physically, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically. You also want to physically nourish him and, not, and also stroke his ego. That's what it's really about learning how to cook. Anyone can put some in a pot. But can you nurture up love, attention, affection, and stroke his ego to where he feels better with you? Only wives can do that. And I think it's interesting because I know that you brought up the role of mothers and sons. And, I mean, I have two, two boys, and I know how I take care of them. Um, and I know that, that that is what I do. I mean, I want to be the person that, that shapes, you know, their lives, whether it's, you know, feeding them or, you know, making sure that they're okay, you know, first thing in the morning or whatever. And, and that feels similar to me as to what you're trying to say a wife does for a husband. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we want what the kids have. Yeah. I mean, we want you to take care of us. We want you to make us a better man. We want, we want you to, you know, um, rub our shoulders and, and yeah. caress our backs. Men love touch. We want that. But you, have to, you, have, you don't want to go overboard in getting a mama's boy right. that's not able to stand on his own. Right. So I think the rule of thumb is to pick a man that's self-sufficient. But, yeah, take care of him like a son. Listen, um, that's all your face. Listen, yeah. <laughs> men 
are extremely loyal to their mothers. Right. Because mothers went first in nurturing him. And so because he nurtured, because she nurtured me, I'm going to get up and do whatever my mom asked me to do because she took care of me. I'm going to provide for her. I'm going to protect for her. I'm going to get mom what she needs because she earns that. She's the queen. Yeah. And I, I mean, I see that in my relationship. I mean, I grew up around all girls. So it's, you know, learning the relationship that a mother has with a son and therefore a man has with a wife. It, it was interesting for me and it was a journey. But I see that with my my sons already. Um, and I know you say it's important, you know as they get older, not to be mama's boys. But you also give advice on your website about how mothers can raise their, their boys to be good men, especially single mothers. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's important to uh, teach your son to be self-sufficient, and that means that you're challenging him. That means you're parenting one step above where he is. So if he's, un- so if he's unable to order from the menu, you let him figure that out on his own because he has to be responsible for raising his family someday. And some moms, because of guilt, go too far in coddling their sons and mm-hmm. taking taking up for their sons and not allowing their sons to struggle or figure out things on their own that when they start dating, they don't really know how to take the lead. So they end up dating mama for real to where women are supporting him. And, and raise, it's like I hear all my girlfriends go like, I don't want to raise this man. I don't, you know, it's, that's what I hear from my girlfriends. No, you don't, don't want to, yeah, you don't want to raise your man. You want, you, and, and for women, they really need to feel affirmed. So he has to be the man. He has to be the protector and the provider already. Women will, will, will support a man if he's down or if he needs a mm-hmm. jump start. But most women don't want to do that long term. He kind of loses his sexiness and, and his strength. I mean, who's the man? So let him grow up. <laughs> so real quick before I let you go, I mean, I guess that that brings in, into question like women um, who are the breadwinners in the family or women who are making more than their husbands, you know, just by nature of what they do. Like, you know, some careers just naturally, you know, pay more. Um, so how do you handle situations like that? Because I think that for men, um, that can be hard to handle at times. Well, it's hard to handle for men that are insecure in who they are. You know, a man that knows where he is and feels like he's successful, he's going to be pretty much cool with it. And a lot of guys actually stake their identities in being able to support you. Mm-hmm. There's a myth that men don't want to date a woman that is in the public eye and, and doing well. There are a lot of men that are absolutely cool with it. They say, hey, you know, we can retire faster. We can get there faster. I have no problem being her manager. I have no problem being her security. I have no problem taking, you know, being the side piece, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, Mr. Beyonce or whatever you want to call it. Right. As long as when we get home, the gender roles change. So out in public, I can support you. You're the name. But when we get home, I do want to be treated like a man. And so women that are able to, to balance that to where they're power brokers at work, but when they come home, they assume the more traditional role of a wife and making her husband feel like a king and she's the queen, they don't really have a problem with it. And, but I, and I think that that's the key because I think that um, obviously with finances and, and money, there comes a certain power. And sometimes there's a, a shift in that when the, the woman may make more than the money. So it's important for the women to also hear when you say that, you know, you have to put down the briefcase when you get home um, and let the man kind of take the lead role. And we have to be comfortable and accepting the fact that you do very well for yourself and not see you as competition. It's teamwork. And, you know, here's the real deal. You know, I I say this, Nikki. Okay. If you're really all that in a bag of chips, it doesn't really matter how much money he makes. As long as he's ambitious Mm -hmm. and he's focused, if you're good at business, why can't you coach him to build his own empire? See, when you think about it, mom, when when dad met mom, he probably wasn't rich. You know, but mom's influence on him, she made him start, you know, eating better, made him start getting along better with his employees, gave him some tips on how to deal with female executives, talked to him about getting a website, an accountant, stop doing his own taxes. Her influence helped him to rise to the top, kind of that Michelle Barack effect. Right. You know, he's the president because he has a great wife. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. So be that wife, and then you won't have to worry about working the rest of your life because you have built your king up. He's going to want to work until he can't. Meanwhile, you can relax and raise a family and not worry about a single bill because you (laughs) gave him your business acumen. 
All right. The show is Love Addiction. You can catch it every week at 8 Eastern on TV One. It airs on Wednesdays. And the book is The Ring Formula. Uh, how to make sure <laughs> how to be the only one uh, he ever needs. You can follow Dr. Tart on Twitter. He is on Facebook and his website is drtart.com. But we're going to continue our conversations. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. I'm having fun. Yeah, and and I mean we do have to say that you do like questions and you do answer questions um and you love to help people with their relationship issues and God knows we need it. So we appreciate you as well. Absolutely. I'm looking to get a lot of wedding invitations. <laughs> a lot of wedding gifts. <laughs> yeah. I gave you the gift of advice. <laughs> it's Dr. Tart. Like I said, drtart.com and also uh you can find him on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you.